For hundreds of years, the mythical shark on the Baja coast has been a popular tale. The mythical shark is known by its name El Demonio Negro, or in English, the Black Demon. The mythical shark is also known to drive its victims insane by giving them visions of death. The opening scene of the film shows two men working the night shift on the El Diamante oil rig. One of the two, called Nacho, is to check the submarine pipeline, while the other is to stay on the boat. Once finished with his job, Nacho started swimming up when something strange suddenly sucked him away from the pipeline. He was then met with a beautiful scene of jellyfish and small fish all around him. Unbeknownst to him, it was all just an imagination, a vision distracting him from the danger lurking around. As he was watching the beautiful creatures in his vision, something suddenly attacked him. The guy on the boat didn't know what happened to Nacho, but he was already starting to have a bad feeling as the boat kept on shaking. He opened the lights so he could see the waters, but failed to see the incoming creature coming to kill him. A family was on a road trip to have some family vacation time. The father, Paul Sturges, was sent to a small Mexican town in Baja California to check on El Diamante, an oil platform. He decided to bring his wife, Ines, and children, Audrey and Tommy, along with him for a small vacation. Upon arrival, Paul and his family were confused and disappointed when they saw the town in ruins, unlike when Paul first visited the town. Everyone in the town was looking at the family with odd looks. Paul approached a guy who was cleaning a fish and asked him if he spoke English, but received no answer. Another guy called El Rey sitting nearby called for Paul's attention. When Paul mentioned that he worked for Nixon Oil Company, the company that practically built the town, El Rey seemed weirdly vexed with him. Realizing that the situation could turn bad between the two men, Ines cut in and introduced herself and their children, cutting the tension with her kind approach. She asked El Rey for directions to the nearest restaurant, and he agreed. El Rey led them to where the nearest restaurant was. On their way, they passed by a statue of Tlaloc, the Aztec god. Ines wondered why there was a statue of Tlaloc in that town, and the guy answered that it was for protection. Tommy saw a tiny statue beside the statue of Tlaloc and exchanged his chocolate bar for it when they reached the restaurant, Paul asked what the guy meant by protection, and the latter answered that it was protection from El Demonio. Tommy approached El Rey and gave his pirate patch to the man. Inside the restaurant, Paul told Ines to book a place somewhere nice while he went to El Diamante to do his inspections. While Paul was speaking to their children, Ines noticed a man sleeping on another table and seemed worried to be in the restaurant without Paul. So before Paul leaves, he pays the bartender to keep an eye on his family before going to the harbor. He approached the harbor guard to report his arrival and asked the guard to radio out to the rig to let them know he was on his way. The guard agreed, but when Paul walked away, he put down the radio again and pulled out a picture of Paul, tearing it down. Paul went to the shore and met a guy named Chaco, who was supposed to take him to the rig. They left the shore on a speedboat, and Paul asked Chaco what happened to the town. Chaco was nervous as he answered that it was because El Diamante woke the demon up. Chaco stopped by a dock, and Paul was confused while Chaco seemed to be fidgety. Chaco made Paul use another boat to go to the rig by himself, telling Paul that a guy named Pepe was waiting for him at the rig. Paul was quite annoyed, but he let it go. When Paul left, Chaco watched him with worry. Meanwhile, Tommy was reading a story about Tlaloc while Ines was looking at the ocean, feeling that something was off in the town, but she didn't know what it was. Tommy then mindlessly told her that there were no birds around, and Ines and Audrey looked towards the ocean again and realized that Tommy was right. Tommy then went to use the bathroom, and as soon as he left, a guy from the bar counter approached them, creepily flirting with both Ines and Audrey. The man started touching Audrey, which angered Ines, who hit the man on the head with a bottle. He took a shard of the glass and told her children to get behind her back. She backs them away towards the exit as she threateningly points the shard of glass towards anyone who might get near them. Once they reached the exit, they immediately went to their car and saw that someone had stabbed their tire. Seeing the men following them, Ines brought Audrey and Tommy to the shore so they could go to the rig where Paul was. The fisherman tried to decline her request to bring them to the rig, but Ines wouldn't take no for an answer and paid the man. The fisherman finally agreed and took them to the rig. The men just watched them and didn't follow them anymore. When Paul arrived at the rig, he noticed that it was deserted. The sea has turned black because of the oil that leaked. Bloody underwater face masks were loitering around, and there was nobody around. He climbed up the creaky rig and went inside, where he saw a small dog. Paul was startled when two men, Chato and Junior, cornered him with weapons raised. Paul introduced himself, and once the two men recognized who he was, they lowered their weapons. Suddenly, Junior asked them to stay silent for a while, seemingly having heard something. Then he and Chato went out to see what Junior heard. 
Junior looked at something in the sea using binoculars. There, they saw Paul's family approaching the rig. Without anyone noticing it, a shark fin was peeking out of the water. Chato shot a flare gun far from the boat, and Junior started making noises to distract the large shark. The shark went towards them and sank Paul's speedboat. The fishermen then saw the shark's fin and sped the boat up so they could quickly go to the rig. Chato and Junior urged the fishermen to go faster, and when they stopped by the rig's dock, Ines and the children stepped off the boat. The fisherman didn't wait any second longer as he immediately leaves, causing Audrey to fall down the water as she was still holding onto the boat. Audrey panicked when she saw body parts under the water and she screamed for her parents who then pulled her up. The family didn't realize it, but the large shark almost got Audrey's leg before she was fortunately pulled up in time. She was panicking and rambling as she told everyone about the bodies she saw, but her parents just reassured her that it was nothing but oil. When Junior took the children into a room, Paul and Ines demanded that Chato tell them what was happening. Chato didn't say anything, but instead showed the couple his answer. The couple watched as the fisherman tried to hurriedly go back to the shore with the large shark chasing him down. The shark's fin went under the water for a few moments before the boat got thrown up in the air and a huge megalodon ate the man, destroying the boat in the process. Ines handed her children hot drinks and went to clean Audrey up afterward. Meanwhile, Tommy saw another tiny statue, or figurine, similar to what he'd taken from the town, and he raised the one he had up towards the other figurines. Outside, Paul and Chato were having a conversation. Chato told Paul that the rest of the crew died, and some managed to escape. Ines then came out, with Tommy and Audrey following behind. The children were talking to the dog called Toro when the dog suddenly ran away, whimpering. Suddenly, the megalodon hit the southern leg of the rig, causing the rig to shake. Ines brought the children inside, while Paul, Chato, and Junior looked for any way to figure out what they needed to do to leave the rig. Paul asked for a complete rundown on El Diamante, such as the control room, electrical, standard satellite, basically the whole thing. But Chato retorted that nothing in the rig works at all. Paul was exasperated at what she heard, and Chato stated that the Nixon Oil Company knew about it but didn't do anything about it, they didn't even send any resources so Chato and Junior could fix things up on the rig. The megalodon hit the rig again, and Paul almost fell into the water if not for Chato, who immediately caught him. They went inside to check the blueprints so they could lay out plans to fix the auxiliary line, as the backup generator wouldn't work at all without the auxiliary line. But they had to go dive underwater to fix the auxiliary line, so Chato and Junior volunteered to do it while Paul would stay at the rig so he could retract them down in the bell. Ines tried to talk them out of it, as it would be very dangerous to go into the water when there's a megalodon looking for any opportunity to kill them. Ines then asked why the huge shark was so interested in the oil rag. Chato answered why. The shark wasn't just any shark, it was a curse sent to punish everyone in El Diamante. Tlaloc, the god of rain, was furious because of human selfishness. The humans took too much, they chopped down trees, killed animals, and tainted the rivers and lakes. The humans thought they were the gods and ignored all of Tlaloc's warnings. And that was when the black demon was born to take revenge against the humans and protect Tlaloc's world that the humans were destroying. Chato also states that the Meg has the ability to give visions to its victims and drive them insane. The Black Demon keeps playing on its victims' minds, and the only way to stop it was to kill it. Stopping Tlaloc was a different story, they had to make the ultimate sacrifice so Tlaloc could finally forgive them. Paul got angry, not wanting to believe what Chato said, and the latter just told him to open his eyes. Paul was in disbelief when he realized that even his family believed Chato. Chato and Junior geared up and got inside the bell that would take them underwater. The two of them checked the auxiliary line, and that's when Paul saw it. Attached to a leg of the rig is a demolition bomb set to destroy the whole rig with Paul on it. Junior had a vision of death. He shook his head to clear his mind and rushed back to the bell. He got inside it and peeked out the small window to see the black demon approaching the bell. Chato, who was still by the rig's leg, was luckily not seen by the Meg. It attacked the bell, and when Paul realized what was happening, he tried retracting the bell, but it was too late, the bell was destroyed with Junior in it. Chato resurfaced beside the rig, and Paul pulled him up. Seeing Junior floating, Paul pulled him up too, only to see that Junior's lower body was already missing. Chato and Ines cried when they saw Junior's body, while Audrey, who was looking out through the window, quickly closed the window so Tommy wouldn't see anything that would traumatize him. After seeing what happened to Junior, Paul was getting more agitated, desperate to protect his family. Ines tried to tell Paul to understand what Chato said about the Black Demon and Tlaloc, which only infuriated Paul, who yelled at Ines for going to the rig in the first place. He realized what he had done and apologized immediately to his wife. Audrey and Tommy approached them, 
and the little boy asked them where Junior was. The adults were speechless as they didn't know what to say to him, and Audrey just lied and said that Junior was in the electrical room, working on something. Paul went to Chato, and the two of them talked about Junior for a while before the topic changed to the demolition bomb. As they were conversing, Paul noticed a boat from afar and immediately called for it. He fired the flare gun, but Chato stopped him, telling him that there was no boat and it was just a vision the black demon was trying to make Paul see. Paul realized Chato was saying the truth about the visions but still had a hard time believing everything else that Chato said. Chato got mad seeing Paul act like a puppet controlled by the Nixon oil company and punched Paul. Ines came out and stopped the two from fighting. Paul walked away, seemingly crazed by the way he talked and moved. He went to the room where Audrey and Tommy were, looking for something. Ines arrived moments later, and Tommy innocently asked if they were going to die. The parent and Audrey immediately comforted him when Tommy started talking about how Tlala preferred children to be his sacrifices, saying that it was the tears of the children that created the rivers and waterways. Hearing the word waterways, Paul seemed to remember something and started looking for things he would need for his new plan. Chato asked him what his plan was, and Paul answered that he wanted to reroute the cooling system so he could get the generator to work. Meanwhile, Ines and their children were searching for anything they might need when Ines saw documents about the annual safety report on the El Diamante rig. Ines read the documents and was dismayed at what she found out. The documents were about the incidents that happened in El Diamante. The documents showed a lot of things wrong in El Diamante that should have been enough of an indication that the rig wasn't safe and should have been shut down. But the incidents were overlooked, and the workers on the rig were ordered to continue the operations despite all the warnings. It was also revealed that it was Paul who signed and presented the documents, which means that he was the reason why El Diamante wasn't shut down. Everyone was so busy that no one took notice of Tommy. Tommy found another figurine, and now that he had a complete set of them, he went to the docks and put all the Tlaloc figurines on a boat figurine. He made it float on the water and prayed for Tlaloc to give them a safe passage through the god's turbulent sea. Suddenly, the Meg hit the rig's leg again, and it caused Tommy to fall to the sea. Hearing his screams, Paul and Ines rushed to save him. Audrey threw a life buoy towards Ines and Tommy as the mother brought Tommy up the rig. Paul, on the other hand, distracted the monster so it wouldn't go after his wife and son. They managed to get up on the rig, and the Meg swam away. Once everything had calmed down, Ines confronted Paul about the annual safety reports that she had discovered. She mentioned Paul's signatures, and when their children walked near them, Ines admitted to their children that their father had been signing off on the El Diamante monstrosity for all these years. Paul explained why he did it. He reasoned that it was his job and he was doing it so his family would have a better life. But Ines refused to listen to his excuses. Because at the end of the day, Paul had a choice, and he chose to let people die just for himself. Doing it for his family is not enough of an excuse for letting people die and not doing anything about it despite knowing that he could do something to save them. Regretting all his choices, Paul got himself drunk, and Chato approached him. Paul shared with Chato everything that he'd done. He was just about to get married to Ines at that time, and he wanted to build a better future for the two of them and their future family. Nixon Oil Company assigned Paul to make a report about the El Diamante, as the rig had already failed since the very beginning. Paul included all the hazards or shortcomings of El Diamante and turned the report in. After turning it in, he was then called by the higher-ups in the company, who indirectly ordered him to overlook all the problems in the rig, and if he didn't do it, they would find somebody who would. Paul knew it was an opportunity for him, so selfishly, he revised his reports and allowed operations in El Diamante to be continued. For years, Paul kept signing off on every report regarding how unsafe it was to work in El Diamante, not even knowing how bad the situation in the rig is. Now, the Nixon oil company that Paul has been working for is trying to kill him by demolishing El Diamante with him in it. It was a perfect scapegoat. Nixon oil company realized that their negligent practices were soon going to bite them in the bum and decided to make Paul take the fall by letting him sign all the paperwork and then killing him on the rig. Chato then advised Paul to fix his mistakes and do the right thing. And Paul knew exactly what he needed to do to make things right. Thanks to Paul and Chato for fixing the generator, Chato was able to use the radio before it was completely destroyed. Fortunately, Chaco, who was sleeping on his boat, heard Chato through the radio. Meanwhile, Ines and her children worked on fixing the inflatable boat that they would use to escape the rig. Chaco went to the statue of Tlaloc to pray, and El Rey approached him, telling him to let Tlaloc finish his work. Paul saw Chato trying to fix the radio, and that's where he realized that Chato never bothered to fix the radio before because he didn't want anyone to come to the rig. He wanted to protect his people, even if that meant he had to go down with El Diamante once it exploded. Paul then laid out his plan for Chato. 
He wanted to manually seal the repair valve on the drill line so it could hopefully relieve enough pressure to trigger the blowout preventer. Once he does it, it will seal the well. Paul also plans on grabbing the bomb and feeding it to the Meg so he can finally kill the Black Demon. Paul and Chato knew it would be impossible for Paul to get out of it alive once he faced the Meg, but Paul was adamant. He knew that the Black Demon wanted him because everything was his fault in the first place. So Paul asked Chato to protect his family. They then went to where his family is, and Audrey asked them if they could pray. Ines was shocked when Paul finally agreed to pray, as throughout the years they'd lived together. Paul had never believed in anything. They formed a circle, and Chato led the prayer. After that, Paul geared himself up to swim underwater. Ines saw Paul and tried to stop him when she realized what he was about to do. But Paul told her about the bomb and how he wanted to fix his mistakes. Ines asked him if he was going to kill the monster, but Paul reminded her that the Megalodon wasn't the monster, he was. The two of them said goodbye one last time before Paul finally dove underwater. Chato, Ines, and the children got onto the inflatable boat and escaped while the Meg was busy with Paul. Meanwhile, Paul sealed the repair valve and was successful in triggering the blowout preventer. The Meg saw him and started chasing him. He hid in the structure of the rig and strapped the bomb to his chest. Paul knew what he needed to do, and that was to sacrifice himself to kill Megalodon. Paul called his family through the radio to say his last goodbyes to them. He first talked to Ines, Audrey, and then Tommy. Paul told them to give the documents to the people in the town so they could use them to bring down Nixon Oil Company, while he would do the right thing by sacrificing himself to appease Tlaloc's anger. The family shared their last I love you with Paul, and the latter finally allowed himself to get eaten by the Meg. When he was finally inside Meg's stomach, the bomb detonated, and he died along with the Black Demon. Paul's family cried as they watched the scene unfold, and they comforted each other. Then they saw El Rey with Chaco and another man coming to rescue them. They all watched as El Diamante was finally brought down, and Ines told her children that Paul was always going to be with them. Tommy took off his necklace, kissed it, and let it sink under the water as a way to honor his father before they finally left. In the ending scene of the film, the boat figurine with the Tlaloc figurines on it was seen getting sucked in by the ocean, indicating that Tlaloc's wrath is finally over. Thank you for watching, and please watch the other recap movie on our channel.